6.30 Chad Afternoons with Jalen Nye. Weekdays at 2 on 6.30 Chad. So how attached are you, your kids, your grandkids to their phones? If we're all being honest here, I I think we know the answer, right? Um, That's why an opinion piece in the Globe and Mail this week caught my eye with a headline. After the pandemic, let's deal with our phone addictions and here are three rules to follow. Ben Lesh writes, before the COVID-19 pandemic, we were spending more than one in five waking minutes looking at our phones. Then screen time became a virtue. Stay home, scroll Insta, stop the spread and the only game in town. Our phone use spiked and our devices tightened their grip. Ben goes on to say our phone use is not merely immoderate, it's downright depraved. Ben is a writer, entrepreneur and partner at Royal Canadian Mead. Ben, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Hey, you know what? Uh, I, I read your article a number of times, and um, all through it, I was getting distracted by my phone and kept thinking to myself, oh, what the heck am I doing here? Tell us about your pandemic phone experience. When did this realization that we need to do something about our addictions to our phone come to you? The truth is that this is something I've been thinking about for a long time, for years, and I think that uh, phone addiction and the broad social problem around immoderate phone use predated the pandemic. Mm. What happened during the pandemic was, you know, things got worse in terms of phone addiction, and and as uh, I say in the piece, per the passage that you just read, that was out of necessity to some degree, and it was even a virtue to some degree to use our screens instead of, you know, the far more kind of dangerous alternative of seeing people in person, for example. But what I identify now is an opportunity to change a little bit because, uh, you know, what I call for in the piece is a change in norms, a change in our broad general understanding of what is appropriate, of how it we behave and how one ought to behave in certain situations. So, and what happened during the pandemic was we had this big change in norms in the way in which we understand ourselves to behave appropriately in certain situations. So as we come out of the pandemic, I hope there's an opportunity to think about new norms. Yeah, and, and that's the point that I wanted to get to next because, Ben, we know that the, 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 the overuse of our phone, it hurts our sleep, it distracts us, makes for challenges in, in relationships, so many things. We know this. I, I don't think that there's anyone listening that doesn't know this or probably doesn't realize that they are spending too much time on their on their phones so you you touched on you know challenging the norms that that we went through during the pandemic let's expand on that a little bit and into maybe a little bit more than why do you think now is the time to do it well i think that now is a time to take a step back and rethink the way in which we want to live And so as we sit back down to a table in a restaurant, for example, for the first time in a year and a half, or we sit across the boardroom table from our colleagues for the first time in a year and a half, we're coming in fresh, and it's an opportunity to rethink our priorities a little bit. And and given this understanding that we share, which I think you said very clearly there, which is we all know that our phones steal our attention. We all know that we do an inferior job as friends, as parents, as workers, when we're looking at our phone or even when we have it in our pocket and we're just thinking about it. We all know that. So can we act on that? And can we agree and make it more socially uh, kind of known and accepted that we're going to change the role of phones in our lives? Ben Les joining me this afternoon. One of the uh, lines that stuck out to me that jumped out at me and I've gone back to uh, read it numerous times is this one by paying attention to where we pay attention we can develop a normative framework for phones that makes us happier and I thought to myself oh my gosh like when you think about how much attention you're paying to your phone and you know never turning off the work never you know having to or always having to get back to things immediately it really kind of did a little click in my brain (laughs) to realize how much time I'm spending on there and is that making me happy and the answer Ben was no (laughs) like it was amazing no doubt about it It, it, it's crazy that we do it it is so clearly not in our self-interest 
to return to the kind of reservoir of stress, uh, which is our phones. But that's the nature of addiction. An alcoholic thinks that alcohol is going to you know, make them feel good and it, and it pulls them back in. But in the end, it leaves them emptier and feeling worse. I think it's really helpful to think about our relationship with phones in the context of addiction, which is to say that the poison is so often mistaken as the cure. We feel bored, we feel listless, and so we pick up our phones again. But in fact, it is our phones that are giving us that enduring sense of ennui. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that we need to establish boundaries, we need structure, and we need rules. And you outlined three rules, so I want to get to them before we're out of time this afternoon. Rule number one, when paying attention to other people, we should not use our phones. Again, fairly simple when you think of it, but it's proven very hard over the past decade or so yeah i mean and and it really is just a decade if we go back even 10 years this this was not a, a problem in the way that it is uh, i cite a study from oxford in which people were paired up with one another as uh, strangers and given a conversation topic and in one group they had a phone sitting face down on the table and in another group there was no phone visible in the group without a phone visible people reported higher levels of empathy of trust of understanding the the mere physical presence of a phone diminishes our capacity to establish intimacy it reminds us that we are interruptible or as uh, the scholar sherry turkle says pausable mm -hmm. because at any point in time our companion may say sorry excuse me i've got to take this or even worse just a subtle glance down at their yeah. phone just to let you know there's something else going on and they don't mean to do it they don't want to do it so i say let's create physical distance between us and our phones because when we sit across the table from a beloved friend don't we want to get a hundred percent of yes. them and give them a hundred percent of ourselves absolutely absolutely and then rule number two when paying attention to ideas put away your phones and I, and I thought this was really important as well i think how often you know um are you in a in a boardroom in a meeting something like that it, it plays in not just friendships but it comes to studying doing work projects being in a boardroom room whether you're at work whatever I mean that's a really important point as well absolutely and it's the same findings in other studies which indicate yeah. that again the mere presence of the phone eats up cognitive bandwidth we are not able to access our full brain power when we can even see a phone in our field of vision so why would we keep the phone there if we want to be able to achieve our potential creatively professionally intellectually number three and this one was the one that um another one that just kicked me right in the butt when paying attention to nothing at all we should put away our phones explain that well this is a key one and one of the, the horrible ironies of our phones the cruel paradox of phones is that they seem to promise us more connection but what they do is rob us of the capacity for solitude which is the joy of being alone and leave us only with loneliness which is the despair of being alone and the way that they do that is by making us feel busy and engaged all the time by reminding us of what we're missing all the time and stealing away from us the opportunity for our minds to wander for us to work through problems in our head you know we don't give ourselves time to process especially in this day and age as we we drink from the fire hose of the internet all day how many things do we read and we skim and we look at the emails and there's just so much and we feel so busy and then we spend 45 minutes looking at instagram yeah. no wonder we don't feel that we have any free time our phones steal our free time from us and they turn it into economically productive time. Mm. That's another key point is you might feel like scrolling Instagram is the least productive thing you could do. It's the engine of the modern economy. <laughs> Interesting. Ben, uh, it was a, a really interesting article, and I thank you for writing it. Um, one last question. How, how, how are you doing at following your rules? I would give myself a 7 out of 10. You're trying hard. I'm trying hard, and uh, as is often the case with this kind of writing, it is as much about a kind of therapeutic exercise as it is, you know, an admonishment to, to others. And so uh, I do find that I've got three young kids, and uh, the rule that I really work on is trying not to use my phone in front of them at all. And, and if I do, as I say in the piece, to apologize to them. I want to teach my kids that it is 
rude and mostly inappropriate to be on a phone in front of somebody else. So that's a message that I try to repeat day after day in my own home. Ben Lesh, I want to thank you for joining me this afternoon. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your thoughts on this one. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Take care. Ben Lesh, uh, writing in the Globe and Mail. After the pandemic, let's deal with our phone addictions. Here are three rules to follow, and we touched on them. That last one that he mentioned, when paying attention to nothing at all, we should put away our phones. And boy, oh boy, isn't that, I mean, that, that really resonates. That really, really resonates. He writes, they have robbed us of the moments we could be free, letting our minds rest or wander. And the cost is is enormous. For one, our phones deplete us, turning leisure into work. Incoming texts demand a response. Sharing photos means editing photos and writing captions. As a result, our to-do list grows endlessly and our actual free time dwindles. He wraps it up by saying our phones are why we feel busier than ever. They annihilate free time, leaving us stretched, stressed, and exhausted. Let me know your thoughts. Yeah, I guess on your phone, 780-496-0063. Or how are you handling the phone usage, the addiction to that thing in your hand, that iPhone, that Galaxy, whatever it is? How are you dealing with it in your world? Let me know.